That's weird. All right, I'm trying it again. Let me let me go to YouTube and delete the other one. I uh, had to do pop out chat, which means I can't easily see how many people are watching. Well, let me close the pop out. Maybe that'll fix the problem. Hey, Dennis, you are here. Okay. Yeah, that's so weird. It's not showing me the chat. I have to do the pop-out chat, which is a little bit of a, you know what, I'll do this. I'll go this. Not optimal, but it'll work. Okay, now, um, this way I can see what you guys are up to. We talked about the uh, this song last week, so you know what song it is. My hair's all like crazy. <laughs> That's what I get for not looking in the mirror before I log in. All right, so I want uh, text. We're up to mystery song number fifteen. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is, but it, your, the chat shows up in a pop-up chat. Um, all right. It, but it doesn't show up just in the regular browser window. Hey, Roger. Kathy. Good to see you, Kathy. Bob Schumann in the house. How many do we have? I can, I can, I had set up the window here so I can, well, see, this isn't up, to, oh, there we go, 14. All right. So I'm here on a normal Monday. Now, next Monday, I won't be here. thing I use Chrome because Chrome is a, a um, Google product and it seems to obviously like YouTube the 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 uh, video launcher window better than Safari it wasn't working very well with Safari so I I use Safari for everything except for this I use Chrome I'm just kind of a Mac guy but but I can see the chat. I just had to pop it out like a pop out window. You remember the song I told you we were going to learn this week? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I figured it out last week and then last night I, I did the chart, the charts for it. So there's a lot, there's a, I didn't, it took me a minute. <laughs> Because it was a lot. Hey, Holly. AJ, what's going on? Sam Stamos. Joseph. A lot of regulars here. I got my acoustic out. I got the dove out. Everybody likes the dove. I get Whenever I use the dove in a video, I get a lot of compliments on it. Uh, it's it, This was my first steel string acoustic, and I got pretty lucky with it. I mean, I tried a lot of guitars, but I really didn't know what I was look, looking for or listening for. I didn't know... Um, I was, to be honest, I've told you this before, I was looking for a loud guitar. And so this is, it is a big body guitar, um, and it is a loud guitar. And it kind of, um, Gibson's in particularly kind of self-compressed, so the harder you hit it, it kind of gets a, it doesn't get as loud as it should, which is nice. Yeah, you got, and I can see the chat. 
Mm-hmm. I just had to do a pop-out window for some reason. It, it wasn't just showing up in the regular window with everything else. So I have I have to have an extra window open, which is not a big deal. Actually, it almost works better because, um, let's see, I need to, yeah, that doesn't really matter. Oh, I want to go, hold on a second. Let me go to the, wait, uh, YouTube, delete that video. I'm, I, I, I'm not that I, I don't think anyone's going to click on the one I started and stopped within 26 seconds, but let's see. Yeah, so this one, let's delete this one. Delete forever. Are you sure? I understand. Yes, delete forever. All right. Let's come back and come close. You know, I'll move this window over here because in case we, I reference a video I did. Um, you know, we could do this song with a four string guitar. Have we? Do you guys, anybody remember what we said? Looking for the name of the song. Is there much difference between a, um, a J45? J45s are more popular. Doves, doves are pretty rare. The hummingbird is more popular. I, I think the, the, I think the J45 is mahogany back and sides. This is, um, maple back inside so it's a really uh really in spruce top it's a really hard sounding guitar i mean it's it's pretty it's pretty bright alex wants to get a j45 he'd like to get an old one or a gibson uh, you know some of those 60s gibsons that had the plastic adjustable saddles they made you know those are nasty don't buy one of those but they you know before they start making those the same models they would do the solid bridge and those are a lot more expensive the ones with the plat the the screws that you can adjust the height um those um those tend to be cheaper because it, the tone doesn't transfer as well through that mechanism as it does just to a, a solid a solid um bridge assembly um let's see <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Uh, then, then you don't remember. So you, you're trying to remember. Don't, you weren't here. Oh, that's right. You weren't here last Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Bruce is here. Everybody, I got all my, right in a row there. Dennis, Bruce, and Holly are all right here. Brett Houston, good to see you. Oh, you were watching for work? Okay. Every now and then, Brett, I'll say, that's a great idea, Brett. Wow, we should give you a raise. <laughs> Or can we hire you away from the, your company and see what happens? <laughs> we might get you a big raise. Don't leave us, Brett. I heard some other guy talking, trying to steal you from us. Uh, hey, Joseph, what's going on, my friend? The um, Jack Lloyd, good to see you. You own a '97 Gibson CL20 standard. This is a um, this is a '90 1990. Um, you can tell with a Gibson, um, the first digit and the fifth digit tell you the year. Here's something else I learned. The, so the first digit tells you the year, and then the next digit, the next three digits tells you the day of the year. So it should never go above 366. Um, and so this one apparently was made, um, it was finished and, or stamped on January 16th, 1990. And it was the sixth guitar that day. So the last three digits tell you, so I doubt that they ever do more than 999 guitars in any one day, at least out of the main factory. Sco, Sco, what's going on? Sadie, you're supposed to be going out. What? On a date? Lena Chen's in the house. Glad to see you. Nobody's remembering a song we talked about? A guy at the Garden Center tried to hire me yesterday. I get that. My, my, my accountant tries to hire me every year when I send him my taxes. It's like I pretty much do my taxes. They just have to enter it and make it legal. 
<clears throat> and every year he would offer me a job, and I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't like doing my taxes. Why would I like doing everybody else's? Thank you, Joseph, for the coffee. I appreciate it. Okay, today's song is in the key of A. Like I said, we could, I think, feasibly get away with a four-string guitar if we wanted to. Uh, we would. We wouldn't. Um, we would. We don't need the low E string and the high E string. So you can take off the outside strings if you want. Make it a little bit easier. It actually would make it easier, but it might feel funny. So that might make it harder. Uh, yeah. Oh, hey, thank you, Lena. Um, yeah, I, I, I get about. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Bruce. Bruce is explaining my methodology. <laughs> my my uh, uh, pedagogy. Yeah, we usually chat for about 15 minutes, get things, get people showing up. Let's see, how many people do I have here? Oh, uh, 24. That's not bad. Got, uh, and see, oh, eight, eight likes. You can hit that like button if you think of it. No big deal. But um, about 15 20 minutes and we start the lesson and then at, um, at, uh, you know, about the top of the hour, after an hour, we, we just start chatting again. So this is more about therapy for me and, uh, me having someone to talk to cause I'm a people person, but all right. So I've got to move all these. So I created, how many is this? Seven different, did I do seven different? Yeah. Seven different. Okay, so the first one is here. All right, um, and there's no tab for this lesson, but just uh, it's just chords. Dang it! I keep opening the wrong window here. Hold on. All right, so we're just gonna have chords. Um, yes, Jack and Diane. That's it. Thank you, Sam. Do you have to go back and watch the last video? So this is a song that, being from Indiana, this, I, I didn't, you know, you don't, you don't really know when you're in a, a region if a song, a song is popular in the radio, if it's popular everywhere. Um, and I didn't have MTV, and I think this song kind of, uh-oh, I'm buffering, dang it. Uh, this song kind of predates MTV a little bit. Uh, when did MTV launch? Was it 83? or No, was it 80? I mean, it... Um, oh, 81, August 1st, 81. But I doubt many people had it. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, I don't remember hearing about it until like maybe 82, which is when this song came out, when Jack and Diane came out. And yes. Um, and so, um, I, I, you know, we, I didn't really realize it was a hit all over the country because I, at the time, I had a friend that was a ba uh, in a rock band in Indianapolis, and they were ha they had they were huge, but only in Indianapolis. <laughs> so, I mean, they they were they like you know Chicago, Michigan. I think Sam, you remember Roadmaster, right? And then so John Johnny Cougar at the time, and then John Cougar Mellencamp, and then just John Mellencamp. I think his manager came up with the name Johnny Cougar. And his man, I think he had the same manager as uh, Bowie. And in fact, if you look at the first record, like the cover, he's kind of got this glam rock kind of look to him. And he, he made his first real money selling um, I Need a Lover to uh, Pat Benatar. I need a lover, won't drive me crazy. So that kind of funded some stuff for a while. I think he bought a house in Seymour. He got like, so I remember the number that was told to me was like $40,000. And when I was like, you know, a young guitar player in Indianapolis, that sounded like, that might as well, might as well have been a million dollars. Especially if you live in Seymour, Indiana, which is still where he lives. He lives on Lake Monroe, I think, in Seymour, Indiana, just, just north of, um, of Bloomington. He's got an apartment in, in Manhattan because he's a painter as well, so he likes to be in, in, in New York City. John White, are there any vintage guitar vendors in L.A. to get, see, oh, heck yeah. Um... Of course, Grunes, yeah. Grunes is great. Uh, Norm's is the big 
vintage guy here in town. He's got he's got a lot of stuff, and most of his really good stuff is hidden in the store. It's not even in the building. It's in his. He's got another warehouse that he keeps stuff in. So Alex has been there. I've never been there. Alex was playing on Norm's son's records, and so Norm's son would say, "Hey, Alex, what do you, what kind of guitar do you want to play on this song?" And they would say, and then they go to the warehouse, pick up like some vintage something, and then that's what Alex would play on the record. You're pretty cool. Alex gets all the cool connections. All right, I want to try to save that a little bit. All right, so like I said, this song could technically almost be played on um, just the middle four strings. The opening chord progression, I wrote um, more normal, like uh, A uh, and D, but um, I think you could literally just play even the intro on the middle four strings. It would be interesting. I would be interesting to see what it sounded like if I took, you know, I could totally do that with one of my strats, acoustic guitar. I could totally take off two strings if I was planning on changing it and just play the song and see how it sounds. Um, uh, he, I haven't read anywhere that he did that. But oh yeah yeah John Cougar Mellencamp yeah I mean <laughs> it, it, it's really funny growing up you know because I mean and John you're kind of the same thing you know Louisville it's like it's all about by the way that was the most amazing Kentucky Derby I've ever seen in my life but. It's all about the Kentucky Derby. In Indianapolis, it's all about the Indy 500. It's the month of May. The whole month is just, the news is like, they'll do like local news for 10 minutes and then it's 20 minutes of, you know, time trials and stories about drivers and stuff like that. I'm so out of touch with all that. Living here, you don't get that kind of thing. Um, but they would make the biggest deal out of the smallest celebrities like Jim Neighbors, you know. <laughs> Good. Uh, what is it? Uh what does he what does he say? Gosh, Sergeant, I talk like this. And I sing like this. You know, and he would sing uh Back Home Again in Indiana, you know, and uh he and then they like Florence Henderson would be there, and that was like, you know, because she's from Indiana, and it was like the biggest deal. <laughs> There's just not many people from Indiana. So it was pretty funny. Uh this song is not in Dad Gad. Um but uh, yeah, Dad Gad's great. You, yeah, you could play it in Dad Gad, but it would be kind of, it would end up be sounding like a song in D. We're in the key of A, okay? So the first thing, um, and what I got is, uh, let me see, I've got to close this window because that's just going to get in my way. I've got this, and so this is the groove, the rhythm of the intro, and it's fairly simple. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm going to put it like right here-ish, all right? And then I'm going to find the chords. Where are the chords? Those should be, yeah, is this that? No. Yeah. Well, I hope I did them. Oh, no, this is that. Yeah. Okay. So, big giant chords. If I was like on top of the game, you know, if like I was really doing my due diligence, I would have all these windows pre made and then I would just <laughs> click through them <laughs> instead I, I'm making them right in front of you okay so we have an A chord and I, I have it fingered and if you notice the diagrams you'll see the dotted line that means don't play that string if the lines are solid um, if there's no finger on it and the line is solid that means it's open okay so this this makes it a little bit faster I don't have to create like the, it was always difficult to get the numbers at the bottom because you know, sometimes you put an X there and an X is smaller than a zero and it was one is small and things bunch up and then you got to put spaces or adjust the side. It just took forever. This is easy because I just dragged those little uh, dots there with the numbers on them. So if you can see it, um, I'm going to drag all, all of the files into, if you want to cheat and look ahead, let me go to Discord. Where is it? Yeah, there we go. Um, I'll drag everything in right now to the Discord. And the Discord link is, did I... Oh, I didn't pin it, did I? I thought I pinned it. Did I not? I did not. Okay, let me pin this. Okay, so I pinned the Discord link, so it's at the top of the chat. And if you're not a member, um, click on that. Okay, and it's going to be in Tom's Lesson Plans and PDFs. Uh, oh, thanks, Bruce. Um, let's see. Um, 
So this is, there's a lot of diagrams here. Let me just make sure these are all the right ones. So. Yeah, so we're good. They're all there. They're just not going to drop in order in this thing. Um, but they'll, they'll drop in there now. Okay, so we have them now. And these are the first two um, diagrams. So if you want to pull them up or print them up or something or organize them into a, way, a, way, uh, um, a uh, Word document or something like that so you can have everything on one or two pages. Um, I have a roadmap too. So I kind of got this weird Jerry rig roadmap because it kind of jumps around a bit. And, um, the... It kind of does that kind of stuff. There's a lot of suspensions. It's basically E, A, and D. Those are the uh, only chords in the song, but there's, and it's almost always over an A string. So the only part where that's not true is this D chord, which is funny because that's the most, it, we, we talk about this. I'm a huge, like, uh, hey, David, what's going on? Um, <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, who would have picked a horse 80 to 1 to win that? Yeah. Well, and the fact that the odds were going up at the time because nobody was betting on it. I mean, if you, everybody started betting on that horse, the odds would have gone down to 20 to 1 or something. That's, it's kind of the frustrating thing. If you, if you think you know something, everybody else thinks they know something too, and it drops the odds. But um, the uh, Fab Gad. <laughs> Fab Gad. That, let's see. Fab Gad. That would be a hard one to play in. And it would be, it would have kind of a F, it, well, it's got A's in it. So it would be a very F major, I'll have to try that sometime, fab. That B is the one that's going to throw you. Fad gad might be better. Fab gad, or fab gab. <laughs> the B, the F to B is a tritone. So you're going to have that, that in there, and that's not going to sound very good. So you're going to constantly having to be covering up that B note with a, maybe a C here. So... Anyway, so the, the first chord is A. Now, you, I've got it figured there, if you can see those little, little numbers inside the black dots, I've got to figure two, three, four, because that's just easier for me. Some people will play A with these three fingers, okay? Some people will play A like this, okay? You see what I'm doing? It almost looks like A major seven, but slide your finger up. Kind of like D seven, but slide your finger up. Uh, some people play like that. Flamenco players will bar, believe it or not, two notes. And add their second. Now that's a typical flamenco uh, fingering for an A chord. And then some people might just do it this way. But this way doesn't make sense because we're going to this. So. There's the hook. That's the freaking hook right there. As stupid as it is, and John didn't really think this record was ever going to get on a record. Uh, the song was going to get on a record. He didn't really like it. And the hand claps were just there to keep track of time because there was so much space, right? It's really hard, especially since that's syncopated. Because if we, we um, th those two D notes, okay, the D open D string, it's on the uh, one E and, let's see, one E and a, two E and a, the and a of two. One, two, so you want to get there, one, two, you want to get there right before beat the three. If I were to play one more 16th note, then you would hear where three is. One, two, one, two, right? I can even hear, if you listen to the recording, the very first time through, it sounds like he's kind of like touching that D string, like getting ready to play it. It's like, it's such a great sound. But think about all the songs in that year. Think of all the songs that did that kind of um, the, the wish you were here. Uh, uh. uh, 
Was that Wishing You, not Wishing You Were Here, what's the name of that song? Uh, oh wait, Wishing You Were Here by Chicago. Um, moving chords around, oh thanks Dennis, these are the drinking game rules. Um, if I do any of these things, uh, then you all take a sip. And I don't do, let's see. Oh, okay, thank you, Sam. Oh, it has no title. Oh, I see. Sunshine of Your Love. Um, so it was last week's song. The um, So it's kind of hard to find that. One, two, bum, bum. you're going to have to practice that. One, two, bum, bum, bum. four. One, two, bum, bum, bum. four. You might do it like that. One, two, and a three, four. And then get rid of the three. One, two. And that's probably the hardest part of the song, to be honest. Trying to find that, particularly that second one. But just big banging chords. But then it's like, that's like an E over A. So we're going to have a lot of those kind of chords um, in this song. It's kind of what this whole song's about. But like I said, there were a lot of songs in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. They kind of did this pedal bass thing. It just sounds so cool. Um, and so it was just kind of one of those things. That, and it, it's almost every guitar player, when they learn an E chord, the, one of the first things they do is... So it's that kind of thing. It's like just sliding things around and experimenting. And John, I think, did the guitar playing on it because it's it's really iconic. Um, it's really the song. If, if somebody else had played that guitar part, I would hope they would have. Like if somebody else created that guitar part, I would hope they would. And Johnny would John would have given them the the writers on it. I met John like once in at, backstage in L.A. Uh, at his show. And I just said, hi, nice to meet you. And then I didn't bug him anymore. I was with, yeah, I was with a, a friend. Oh, thank you, Sam. Okay, so we got A and then E over A. So I'm just, I'm just playing um, open A string. Second finger on the second fret of the fourth string. First finger on the first fret of the third string. Top two strings open. Okay. It kind of sounds like an A major ninth. It's by itself, you can kind of... There's no C, in, C sharp in there, but it's just a really pretty chord, right? But in this kind of... It just... It sounds like E. Like you're almost going... Right? But that's a heavier sound, isn't it? So with that A pedal in the bass, it's just a more friendly sound almost. It's more it's more rural sounding to me in some ways. Like if this were Boston or New York or Chicago or you know a rock and roll town or something in LA, even LA, you know, in the 80s, it would, like like if, if ACDC had written this song, it would have been. Okay? So it just goes A to E over A. And then back and into just a plain old D chord. Now, I like I said, I think you could probably do this with just those middle four strings. I don't know. I don't know that I hear that F sharp in that chord. So if I just think, see, I think he's just hitting that. So there's a good chance this is not even an E string on that guitar on a high E string. You could get that up. You know, Keith Richards would sometimes take off the low uh, E string. Because he's tuned to open A or open G, and he would just want to do stuff like this, and he wouldn't want to have to mute the the low E string. So it's not it's not un, unlikely that that whoever played the guitars on this did this. All right. Okay, so we have A, and then and we're gonna come back to this because the end of the song does the same thing, but it's syncopated. Four, one, two, three, four. So we're gonna do E, uh, e over A, then A, and back to E over A, and then. And then we don't play D again, but and again, like I said, I think that D note that is the thing you could probably walk into a guitar store, pick up an acoustic, and go 
And notice how I mute it at the end. It's not, that doesn't sound like the song. It's, you play anybody's going to start singing Jack and Diane. It, it, when you have something that that's, that's that iconic or something, you know, I, I always say the hook is the thing that gets a, the 13 year old girls to call on the radio station and play that song with a, that, uh, <laughs> cause that's what people were doing. They're like, wait, that was weird. Okay. That's kind of cool. And it's, and it's the hand claps are there, so you can keep track of where one is. Mm, ba -ba -bam, pow, mm, ba -ba -bam, pow, you know, it's, but it's still this kind of hung out to dry guitar that was very, it's unexpected. It's like that, it's the money chord I talk about all the time. It's like, you gotta, you gotta put something in there that's like, wait, what was that? And then that gets people to listen. Okay, it's real easy. Hey, Gary, good to see you. Somebody just po uh, Dennis just posted the the, uh, the uh, commandments, the the Tom, the, <laughs> what, what do we call them? Co I forget now. Command sips. Tom, Tom's ten command command sips. Um, but it, it you know it's 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 one thing to write a song and Gary like for you know you write a, you write songs all the time or, you know you that you wrote and. Um, what you want to do is you want to take that chord progression that you wrote, okay, what you did, and then try to do something. And usually these hooks are created first. It's like one of the first things that happen. And like, you know, probably was the first thing that was written in that song. It probably didn't come up with that later. It was probably just messing around and came up with that. Or um, it was an exercise that he would do to warm up on stage. And then went, wait, we got to write a song around that. Uh, those are all hooks and those are those are line those are not the, it's not a course the the the, the chorus to beat it beat it beat it beat it beat it uh, it's not very interesting melody it's that so the hook doesn't necessarily it's most often the chorus melody maybe 40 percent of the time but the rest the other 60 percent of the time could be any number of things and for this song i mean i think it's the Kind of the story, the lyrics of this song are kind of the hook. People are like, oh, oh man, he's singing about us. And originally, he Jack was going to be a black kid, and uh, the record company told him to, to change that, which is interesting. That kind of tells you, though, so, probably because they just felt like it was, it was going to offend people, and uh, they wouldn't sell any records. So 1982, maybe, I don't know. In Indiana, I don't know. <laughs> we didn't care. Although Seymour <laughs> and and uh, Seymour is like uh, thirty minutes from uh, what's that town? Not even thirty minutes. Uh, is it Crawford's? Not Crawfordsville. Dang it! I can't think of the town, but it was like the headquarters for the Ku Klux Klan or something. <laughs> it was like uh, they actually had a sign when I was a kid outside that town that said, "Don't let the sun go down on you, darky." I kid you not. Um, and, uh, so they, yeah, that was, that was, uh, <laughs> but, but I remember driving through there with my band and it was, I was like one of the only white guys in a funk band and we're driving through, what is it? We're, we're doing, going to, you had to, when you went from Indianapolis to Bloomington to play at Indiana university, you had to go through this town and I was driving way too fast. And they go, you know, they're going to hang you with us. <laughs> I said, Oh shoot. Right. I forgot. I was driving like a hundred miles an hour because there was no one on the road. It was like three in the morning. We're trying to get home. He's like, yeah, you don't want to do that. I went, oh, right. Isn't that crazy? And that was like 1980, 1979, 1980. Um, so we got this. T4. And I know you don't read music. Four. Two, three, four. Three, three times, sorry. Two, four, one, two. And then it goes into the song. Um, so we're going to have to do a little bit of a bar chord. We only need to get three strings with our first finger. And you can play it. I don't think he's doing it that way. Yeah, I think it's this way. 
like I said, again, you could take off these top two strings. It would almost make it easier. Um, or the bottom string and the top string. Sorry, you could take off the two E strings. Um, oh, dang. Should that... Has he got pneumonia? I mean, it sounds like pneumonia, right? My mom had that happen, but it was... She, she was constantly getting her lungs pumped out, but it was because she had an internist, an internist found a little teeny dot on her lung and it was a, on, on the x-ray and it was a, like a little teeny tiny tumor or something that was triggering her immune response and her lungs were like trying to do something, get rid of it or something. And they kept filling up with fluid. She was in the hospital several times with that and they thought she had asthma and so they put her on an inhaler and <laughs> it was just more fluid. So she had to go, it was like, you know, they had her, yeah, anyway. Yeah, that was horrible. They, when the, thank God for the young doctor that just kind of went, wait, there's something there. And then they opened her up, took it out, and she was fine. So, But they had to open up her chest, like, you know, the, the rib cage, that whole thing. Oh, my gosh, what a pain. It was so painful. The recovery. Um, okay, so the next section. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna minimize these. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna write the name of the song. Let me do that. I'm not gonna put John Cougar Mellencamp in here. Though. I'm just gonna put Jack and Diane. I don't, I don't, I, I'll fall asleep doing all that. Poor guy. He changed his name three times. Actually, probably four because originally it was John Mellencamp. They changed it to Johnny Cougar. Okay, so. This is what I'll call the A riff. We're going to have an A riff, a B riff, a C riff, and a D riff. All right. These chords won't be used again until we get to the D riff. All right. And the D riff's the same kind of thing. It's the end of the song. All right. Now, the next riff is the B riff. And it's the most common riff. We're, we're going to use two parts of this. Make sure I got the right one. Yeah two parts of this. Um, so we're going to call the top two bars, we're going to call this B1 and the bottom two bars B2. Okay. But for the most part, we'll do it as B, all of it together. And then when we get to the chorus, it does the first two bars three times and then the, the bottom bar once. Okay. And that's... <laughs> messed up there. That should be, that last chord on the first line should be the E over A. Okay. I'll fix that later and re-up it to the Discord, okay? Uh, shoot. How did that? I must have. Did I do it wrong? On the, no, it's not on the other side. Okay. And then let me give you the chords for this. All right. So I've got, I've got this, and then I've also got the chords, which I think are here. All right, so we'll go over these chords, okay? And then we'll go over the rhythm. Let's get the chords first. So the first chord, again, middle four strings. Well, see, these are gonna be in the way. I gotta move these up here. What was I thinking? I was thinking they weren't gonna be in the way. <laughs> okay, um, so the first chord, you can kind of think of it as a C form. Or going up the fretboard, okay? So you just kind of visualize. We talk about the cage method. That's the C form. Okay, but we're only going to use these three things. And it's kind of up to you. You could go ahead and get your bar ready to go because we're going to be going to it. That's how we're going to start. So we, we start with this A. You got the open A string. Then I'm at the eleventh fret. I'm at the ninth fret, and I'm at the tenth fret. Okay. Oh, new guitar day. We had a new guitar. Oh, nice. Oh, your Gil baritone. Holy cow. Well, that's perfect for you, Gary. Get those nice, rich chords to match your voice. 
okay? So what I'm doing is I'm playing that A chord, and I, you know, again, you can bar back there. You don't have to play like this, because you're gonna need that. But it doesn't matter, you can do it either way. Or you can go individual speed, okay? But if you want to bar, we're going to bar at the ninth fret. And we're going to basically get uh, the top four strings, but you don't really have to worry about the E string. So you really can just almost bar everything with the first joint of your first finger. You can even bend it. You, you can even bend like that, and it's still going to cover. Unless your you know hands are really small, it might not. But um, I don't do that. But some people do that. That's all another way of playing the A chord is bending that finger back, and you get the E string open but so we're gonna start with so with that and then we add the third finger on the 11th fret of the fourth string okay and then not, then the, the ninth fret is played with the first finger on the third string and on the second string we're gonna have our second finger here uh, on the 10th fret and then we're gonna add our pinky on the 12th fret we're gonna do this so that's, a, that's an A triad major triad and we're adding the second so the A2 chord Exactly right. Gary's gonna have to post a picture in Discord of the new one. I didn't know Guild made, made bear tones. Is it a new one or an old one? Oh, there you go. Put an unboxing. That's a great idea. All right. Once you got that down, then you just take your fingers off and go to that bar. And that bar is an E major triad with an A in the bass. Kind of creates a very Beautiful, kind of pretty sound. It's very, it sounds like a kind of an A major seven chord, right? Love, exciting and new. It's like the love boat theme, right? <laughs> Same era. And then, so now that you have that, that's E over A, because I got the A string, right? And then you just slide it down two frets. Let's see. Let's know, it goes. Okay, so the rhythm on that is one and two and and four and then short. Okay, notice I on the on the rhythmic chart there. There's a little thing that looks like a seven at the end of that first bar. That's a rest. So don't let don't let it ring out. There's gonna be times where we're gonna want stuff to ring out, but we want these a lot of these chords to be short. So these are long, but those short chords allow some space, and it also allows you time to get to the next chord. Okay, so the next chord is just slide down two frets to the seventh fret and bar again the, the, those three strings the, the D string, the G string, and the B string uh, at the seventh fret, leaving the A string open. And again, we're just playing the middle four strings. You don't want that, you don't want that note there at all. You don't want the top string. So again, <laughs> you could totally just go with a four string guitar. It'd be kind of silly because it would be like you'd have to have that guitar just there for that one song. back to E, and then we're going to go E sus. So that just means adding our second finger on the second string at the 10th fret, and then taking it off. And again, short. Uh, and notice on that D over A, oops, it's short, and that's syncopated. That's a very syncopated rhythm. One, two, three, four, bump, bump, bump. Try it. Let's do that. Let's just clap that, okay? One, uh, just those first three notes. So the, the D over A, the other D over A right after it, and then the E over A, those three notes. So it's one, the uh of one, one E and uh of one, and the and of two. Bump, bump, bump. Sounds like a triplet. One, two, three, one, two, three, but it's not. <laughs> one, two, three, four, bump. Okay, that's a syncopation. It's a very common syncopation, and it was particularly common in this era. Um, syncopations were kind of used to create energy and momentum. 
Um, and it was just, it's just another tool in your toolbox to, uh, to, to do that, to kind of create some, some energy and, uh, like I said, momentum and pushing forward. Uh, anticipate. It's very common. It's almost like a horn section thing, right? We've talked about this before where a lot of times, bah, 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 you know, horns don't do a ba they do, but, but a lot of times you hear a horn section, you see a horn section up there, you know there's going to be syncopations. You know they're going to be going ba 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 da 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 you know, and that's what's happening here. It's kind of like a, horn, a syncopated horn section. ba 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 Okay, let's, now let's clap that and four, okay? So it's one, two, three, four, ba 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 and four. ba 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 So all I'm doing is looping that second bar. It's the same as the fourth bar, too, by the way. Now, I did make a mistake. That's not supposed to be an A chord on that last one. It should be an E over A. Um, I'll show you that in a second. Ba, 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 and four. Ba, uh, and four. Ba, 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 ba. Okay? So you, can, you don't have to clap your hands. You can tap. You can even just hit your strings. And you can do it all down. Okay, so what that is, is a, it's the D over A, which is the seventh fret bar slide up to the ninth fret to get the E over A and then add that sus and take it off. Short, short, long, short. You can yeah, it's a Gibson Dove. You see that? Um, 1990 Gibson Dove. So, the uh, so it's almost like sometimes you have to get the chords down and you have to get the rhythm down and then you put those two things together. Okay. Then the next bar is the same as the first bar. Okay. And then coming back, we're gonna. Okay, it's the same rhythm. Bump, 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 bump. But the chords are different. It's D over A, E over A, and an E. Or, I'm sorry, A. This is how we're playing A for this section of the song. The, the next section, which I'm calling the C section, <laughs> is uh, is going to be down here. The a, you'll play A like this. Okay. So um, we have uh, 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 so that whole thing together is. When he goes to the, and he may go, may just let that ring. That happens probably a couple times. Um, the chorus is, um, yeah, so when he goes, um, So, oh yeah, life goes on. He sings so high. When he gets to that point, you're gonna do that top line t three times and the bottom line once. Okay. The verses are a little ditty, Jack Dunn. Two American kids growing up in the hot land. Okay. So when he's in the verses, you're gonna do it that way, and you'll probably do it. it I think both times it's twice, all three times. It goes to the verse three times. Um, you're gonna you're gonna do that twice every time. Um, when it goes to the chorus, you're going to do the first line tw three times and the bottom line. So it's going to end up being a four bar phrase. Uh, and so I would call that first line B1. So it's going to be B1, 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 and then the second line B2. Okay. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. I can, I, I've got it right here in front of me. I can, I can send, I can, uh, maybe I'll copy and paste that in there. Okay. But this is so I can kind of keep track of it. And then we, we, so we haven't even gotten to a course yet. <laughs> The typical, like, remember we talked about this, like today the average intro to a song is three seconds, but in like 1984 it was 23 seconds. So this intro is pretty long. I mean, when you think about the... Three times of that. That's probably a 30 second intro almost. And then when it finally kicks in, it's...
And again, I messed up on that the, the the chart there. That last chord on the first line should be a E over A. So we're just doing that. I'm adding that sus. Sorry, I always turn my hand guitar too far that way. How can I fix that? If I maybe if I move my foot pedal over a little bit, it'll force me to turn. I think it's easier to see my hands. As well. Yeah, and then, oh, shoot, you know what, I don't know, Bruce, you didn't say anything, I, I should probably um, put a note here. Oops. Next lesson on Tuesday, what day is that, Tuesday the 24th? So I won't be here Monday, um, but uh, with the next lesson. Oh, we got up to, dang, we got up to, what the heck? We got up to 38. That's crazy. All right. Let's drop from that. But All right. So. And so you've got. So far, we've got two parts of the song, two of the three main parts, but the only thing that's going to be different is at the end of the song, we're going to do the intro, but syncopated. Um, again, I think that syncopation thing was, not only was it idiomatic for the era, it was very Indiana. There was a, a lot of that kind of feeling in Indiana for some reason on a lot of the songs by the artists from Indiana. Uh, if you listen to John Hyatt, who's also uh, an Indianapolis guy, he, um, he would do a lot of those kind of vibes uh, he has some great songs great great songwriter one of the few artists one of the few songwriters that uh wrote songs for bob dylan <laughs> bob dylan actually covered his music or a song i don't know which how many but uh are you seeing the likes wrong i don't know i see 23 likes okay so i'm going to minimize these and we're going to go to the next section, okay? And the next section only happens twice. But for some reason, to me, it almost feels like the more iconic part. But the, what we just played is really most of the song. It's the verses and the choruses. What we just played is both the verses and the choruses. I don't, I'm min only minimizing these so I don't have to add them again. So if I want to reference them, I can pull them. Okay, so I'm going to make this one smaller too. All right. Now, so the next section the chords are is this uh, yeah I kind of had a hard time figuring out how to write these out but yeah I can't I want there we go probably prefer it over my face so we got technically five new chords but it's not that crazy uh, and then the riff is this it. No, that's the one we just did. This is it. All right. And I, I forgot to write, I meant to put in a, a slide symbol, like sliding from one chord to another. Um, and this one, hopefully I did this one right. Um, but you're going to go... Um, and that, it just does that once, and then it goes back into. Okay, it's going to go back to that section. And that's this, what I call the B section. This is the C section. It does this just twice in the song. But again, it's just, for something about this one, it's like, it, that's just so iconic. I think. If you go to a guitar store and play that, everybody's going to know what you're doing. Although that also sounds like... Sounds like a fast car, which is so funny because the head of A&R at 
Universal Music accused me of stealing that hook for the one of the Bieber songs that I wrote, and uh, I was like, no. <laughs> she thought it. She thought Yellow Raincoat was a was built on Fast Car. I'm like, no, not at all. Fast Car, Tracy Chapman. Uh, what year was that? I was in California. I was 87. Yeah, I was way after the sun. Okay. Now, there's another um, John Mellencamp song. It's, it's, um, How's it going, Andres? Hurts so good. Hurts so good is great. It's, it's got that A chord that we're going to work on right now. Uh, but they they do the sus, a sus four and a sus two, and then a sus six. Gets them all in there. I've always liked that riff. People don't know that one nearly as much as this one. Though. Okay. So here's what, what we have here is. So it's kind of the same thing. We played the D this way, D over A, and the E over A this way. And we're going to play A now. Finally, we got this. So we're going to take this thing we did, and we're just going to put it down there. And then the shape we used for here, we're going to use that shape down here. So we're using uh, the A form. These are A forms. And then we're using the C form. So we're using the C form and the A form if we're thinking in, in the caged method. Uh, methodology of chord shapes that's kind of you know we're only using two of the of the five of the five pennant or uh, cage method shapes um, but we're going to kind of imply an E form shape but I'll show you that in just a second okay um, so uh, we're going to take this bar here again we're just playing the middle four strings okay and then we're going to add our second finger on the third fret of the second string, so we're getting that D note, and then F sharp here with the third finger on the fifth, uh, fourth fret of the fourth string. That's gonna take some practice, just practice this. All right, it's gonna take some strength because you're gonna have to hold that down and practice that. Once you have that down, then you're going to kind of make the D chord. So this is A, and this is D over A, and this is A. So it's A, D over A, A, E over A. But we're sliding into it from technically D over A. So kind of make D over A again. Do that. And then that's going to take some practice. You can just practice it by itself. Don't try to... Don't play the whole song just to get the, try to get that. The hard part's gonna be keeping those notes ringing out after the slide. It takes a bit of strength. Now, he may do this, I couldn't quite tell, but so you can see the first diagram is the A chord. There's the D over A, and then slide up. I didn't, I didn't notate the, um, I didn't notate uh, the bar under the E over A chord. Okay, I just put the first note there. You don't. You could totally do that because the only time you need that A chord is those two spots. But I don't know. I might. I, it would be difficult. You could change at that moment to just this. Okay, but I, I didn't know quite how to notate that. This is one of the issues here. And then to me, it sounds like he kind of goes. He just hits the A single note, but I put A two. So if you want, there's a lot of susses in this song. So if you want to do that A two chord, it's like this. So now that you've got the E chord up here, E over A, you just add the pinky, not just, but add the pinky in front of the third finger, like that. And it's kind of like doing 
It's like an E sus thing. With the A in the bass. It's a very cool sound. Um, but you could just hit the A string and then hit the E over A again, all right? Um, oh, I forgot to tell you, too, that you're like, what's SN? Did somebody ask me? Um, yeah, I'm letting the A string ring out. Yes. Thank you, Bruce. Um, so on this one here, that SN means single note. Sorry, I didn't say that. I meant to do that. So I could have done an SN right there on that A, uh, on these A chords right here. <laughs> Let's see if I can point to it. Right there. See that, that A chord and the one above it, which I can't point to? Uh, the A2 chord. You could just play, just play the A string like that. So... Thing, Holly, is you do want to mute everything for those short chords, like the D, and then he does, he goes, and here you'll notice I'm not barring. So for sure, once you get to this part, you don't need to have the bar back there. There's no, never a need to work harder than you have to. But the first, in fact, you could even use that A note, that single A note. Is an opportunity to shift from the bar and the two fingers added to just the three fingers. Okay, so we're gonna go. Um, so then we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna be here. So this is the second bar, D over A. It's that syncopation again. Bah, 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 bah. Okay, and it's gonna be. Uh, D over A, which is open A string, fourth fret on the fourth string with the third finger, uh, second fret of the third string with the first finger, and second string, third fret with the second finger. <laughs> Hardly keep all that straight, okay? But the shape is right there. It's a D over A, and I have it written like that, but with a bar, but you can go ahead and go just a single note, especially in the second measure. Hit that twice, and then go up here. And then what he does is he hammers on this. He makes it an E6 chord. It's just, he's just having, he was just experimenting. He's like. And then he's going to resolve to that. So when you get to this D the second time on the bottom line, you might want to have that A chord ready to go. If you're like this, you're going to have to make it. It doesn't matter, but. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make an executive decision here, so I may end up changing the, the tab on this as well, or not the tab, but the uh, notation on this as well, and change that to an A single note, okay? So, we're, um, it just sounds better to me. It sounds more like the record. Okay, so you, you understand what I'm saying? So we can ignore that A2 chord. You don't need to worry about that. Just play the... Play the A, the D over A, to A, slide up to the E over A, hit the A string, and then hit the D, E over A again. Okay, so it's kind of just three chords. And then we're gonna, again, that, you can practice that, just sneak that pinky in there. If you go out too far, hit that E7. We want a nice E6 here. Again, it's just a, like a, when you add that six, it's like you're doing that. That's what that is. That's an E, E6, E, E6. It just sounds totally different in this context. There we go. Right? <clears throat> Lurking is allowed, Alan, yes. All right. Is this making sense? You getting it? Um, it is. It is a little bit of a, a muscle song. It's a good. It's a good song. It'll it'll work out these muscles, I think, in your wrist because you, you're having to kind of even here.
Okay, so then um, after it does this, but again, it only does this once. It goes back to the, the B section, which is the... it does um, the I'm gonna minimize these all right put these over here uh, and then this we're back to this okay and so that this again these chords um, are the um, uh, both the verses and the choruses, all right? Um, so we're back to this. And so when uh, we go back to that verse, we still haven't gotten to the chorus at this point. So we've done the... We did that, that's the intro. And then it goes to this. Little ditty about Jack and I. Almost kind of wraps it almost too, huh? Um, and then it goes to this. It doesn't go to the chorus. goes back to this another verse uh. and then it finally gets to the chorus oh yeah life goes on and it's the same chords and the same voicings as the verse. The only thing, like I said, it's going to go, uh, it's going to do the top line three times and the bottom line once. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm not, I just did the whole thing. Okay. So for the chorus, it's going to be, uh, it's hard to sing this and play at the same time. <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's like chewing gum, patting your belly, rubbing your head, and skipping. Uh. Oh, I, did, I screwed it up again. Okay, hold on. Um, so it's... A, a, Line. It's hard to do. It's hard to keep track of all those things and sing and play at the same time. Hey, Catherine, what's going on? We're doing Jack and Diane. So it's a kind of a fun. For me, it's like totally high school. Huge John Mellencamp from Indiana, from Indianapolis. It's like, oh my God, he's a rock star. We're famous. Everybody loves Indiana. Love us, please. We're flat in the middle of the country and we only have the Indy 500. We got nothing going on. That's what it feels like when you're living there <laughs> as a kid, anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, I yeah. But I, I'm hearing the A string and the bass, and that would be really hard. To so that's the that's like the the poor man's way to teach it. I think, but I think he's probably, I should, should have watched the video to see if, is it Mike Wenchik or whatever his name is, the guitar player? Um, but I'm pretty sure that's probably how it's played, the way I was listening to it anyway. Um, so, yeah, so if you pull up tab on it on the internet, it's probably going to show you. But, I mean... I, I've I've watched lessons on how to play Yellow Raincoat, which is a song I wrote for, with Justin. 
Justin Bieber and <laughs> it's like they have hundreds of thousands of views on how to play this song that I wrote wrong and so I did a video on how I actually played it I actually played it on this guitar and you know I've got like 10,000 views or something <laughs> and people and I had someone comment you did, you can't just say you wrote that song you can't just say that you, you, you didn't write that song. I said, actually, I did. And people are like, yeah, look it up. He did write it. <laughs> this is funny. Indy 500, that's kind of like NASCAR. Oh, look, making a left turn. Yeah, I wonder what they do next. Exactly. Yeah, you're, you're a snob, Dennis. <laughs> you're a Formula One snob. <laughs> Go drink your wine. <laughs> so, yeah, so Catherine, yeah. Yeah, no, and you could, you could, the only problem is you could, that's e definitely easier, it's almost like a ukulele part. Um, but you lose that, that pedal tone, which is kind of, iconic in the song, you know, now it just sounds like it's If you were just to strum it You could totally do the song like if I was if I couldn't play that part and sing at the same time But I needed to sing it somewhere. I would probably just go Long I sing. So, especially that high. Oh, yeah. That's not even that high. <laughs> okay, so, so you're not a European snob then. Dennis. Okay, I take it back. <laughs> and you called it, did you call it soccer? You called it soccer. That's like, isn't that, don't you get punished in Europe for calling, well, no, it's in Latin America that they call it football, right? In Europe, they call it football, they call it soccer. You probably call, like, the Patriots, that's American football. Oh, man, I did, Roxanne. <laughs> You know, I, what was it? It was like, I wonder if I could do Amazing Grace to this. Uh, yeah, I have all those Amazing Grace, you know. So, uh, NASCAR to the left hand. Yeah, it's uh, some, something about the 85, you know, NASCAR in particular, too, how close they are to each other it makes it really exciting. When I watch Formula One, the it seems to me with all the turns and they're just constantly slowing down and speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, that the it's very difficult to pass someone in, in Formula One. Um, and uh, what did we used to call it? I mean, kind of like road racing, but with Indy and NASCAR, um, it's just a big, fat, wide track. And they hardly even, and Indy, because of the slope of the turns, they hardly even have to turn the wheel. I mean, it, if you just drive a car into that turn, the turn's gonna make the turn for you. Um, it's pretty crazy. And inside uh, the the Indy 500 track is two and a half miles around, and inside they have two 18-hole golf courses. I think you can fit 19 Vaticans inside the St. Paul. You can fit 19 
St. Paul Cathedral inside of the Indy 500 track. Uh, it's it's crazy. And it, they'll have a million people there for that race, too. Uh, it's something to behold. I've been to one race. I've been to time trials a lot. But I only went to one race, I think it was 1972, when I was 11 in my – or 12. No, it was 11. And um, I may have been 10. Was it right before my – it was in May. So May 72 would have been – maybe it was May 73. Um, and I remember our old neighbors from, from Washington, D.C. came to visit because they wanted to go to the race. So they got we got tickets and we went together. It was fun. You get sunburned. We were in turn one, so which is great because we could see all of the straight main straightaway. Okay, we could see really far away. You could see the um, fourth turn. We could we were right on top of the first turn. You could see what's called the short shoot between. It's kind of the shape is actually kind of like an iPhone. It's it's got the short shoot, and we could see that. And we, so we're here in turn one, and then you could see turn two. So. We could see almost 50% of the track from our seats, which is pretty cool, um, in spite of the fact that it's so enormous. Oh, you're back from your guitar lesson. Dang it, they're on Mondays. So, um, yeah, so uh, Catherine was saying, yeah, she, she looked up tab. I think if you look up tab on this, that's the, the, the kind of the common way to teach it. But I'm... You know, it's really hard. It's much better. That doesn't sound right. Uh. So you can't get that. You can't get that A note on that E chord. That sus. That E sus. You can get it really easy that way. So. Catherine, maybe try it on an electric. If you have an electric guitar, pick up an electric guitar and do it. It's a lot easier to push down uh, the little, and again, we're just making a, a three note bar chord, which is a great little introduction to playing bar chords. Now you're going, well, but Tom, you're barring four strings. Well, technically I'm not concerning myself with the first string. So I'm really trying to focus the, the pressure and the energy of the finger onto uh, the second, third, and fourth string. And again, right up against that fret, not on the fret, not, but not back here. The further back you are, the harder you're going to have to work. So you make sure, Catherine, that you bring your finger up and just practice getting this thing to ring out. You just have to do that. Um, and that was the C section, which, which only happens twice in the song. So then it goes back to the A section. Does it twice. Okay. Now, um, that gets uh, that, and then it goes back to the another verse. Uh, and again, I made a mistake on that, that, that notation there. Um, that last chord on that first line should not be an A, it should be an E over A. So you're just going, you're just staying on that. Then you're going to go, then you go to the A on the next line down. A, A2, A, A2 Brutus, E over A, E, A, E, E over A, E over A, and A over A. Yep. Hockey. I, my, my main sport that I like is NFL foot, football. That's like pretty much the only thing I'll ever really watch. Yeah, it's a definite, it's definite, yeah. Oh, that's good. You're tennis level. So you must be a lefty, AJ. Are you lefty playing right handed? Yeah, because the right hand, I tennis elbow here. I've got to do my exercises. I should do those today. She's got to do them every day or else it's not going to go away. I, I can still feel it. It's been almost a year since I played tennis. Since I and I, every time I get tennis elbow, it's literally from playing tennis. It's not like oh, I was doing push-ups or I did something, lifted something. No, it's always from tennis. It's the only thing that get, gets me. Some people that never play tennis can get tennis elbow. They're like, how did I get tennis elbow? I don't play tennis. Uh, but no, I, every time I, I've got, I've had it two or three times now, and the older I get, the longer it takes to heal. So it's frustration. 
Oh, you're right. Okay. You're a baseball person. Who's your team, Pepper? Because you're from out here, but you live in Alabama. So I'm. People in Alabama tend to be. Let me guess. I'm thinking uh, the Atlanta Braves. That tends to be everybody's favorite team in the South. My dad lived in Gulfport, Mississippi, and he became a Braves fan. It's like really. I mean, he's from Chicago. You you should never stop being a White Sox or a Cubbies fan, but he hated both those teams. He couldn't win, so that's why he hated them. Oh, good. Oh, so oh, so glad, Holly. Your fingers do better. I forgot about that. Okay, now um, so then it goes to the chorus again. And then, so when we do the chorus, we do that top line three times, and then we do the bottom line once. Still the B section, but, um, and then it goes to the C section again one more time. It, just, it only does this twice. And then it goes back to this. And it's, it's all, it's all similar shapes. goes to we just did this uh, uh, another chorus oh and then it does a really quiet one so um we do that this section we go Jack and Diane, two American kids do the best they can okay so just a real simplified subtle takedown of it quiet version of the beat i will yeah it's I can, like I said, I can post this up on, on this little, this thing that I've, I'm, my cheat sheet. I can post that up on uh, Discord. But I, I may put, right here is where I'm at right now, way down there. So that's the quiet B. Okay, we're going to do a B. But you may just play each chord, like just A, B, I'm sorry, A to E over A, D over A, A, uh, E over A, now A, E over A, D over A. And then it's going to go. But it doesn't. It changes. It becomes a syncopated version of that. All right. So let's minimize these. I got all this garbage over here now, right? This is like so trashy. It's so white trashy, which is perfect for a John Mellencamp song, to be honest. You know, another great song is, uh, is uh, Pink Houses. That's a great one. How does that one go? Again, another kind of iconic, and I remember that was uh, Carol, was it Carol? This girl that sang on it. These pink houses go. It's kind of a similar vibe. Okay, so I just have one more diagram, and all of these have been uploaded to Discord, which I have pinned there. So if uh, you are, oh, I'm getting emails. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Who's, who's emailing me? Oh, well, that's good. I like their emails. As of Okay, well that's not exactly. What's that? Okay, don't need that. Okay. Uh, hey Jeff, hi, what's going on? Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I should have looked that up. I just got so, like, I was, like, going, okay, how do you... Oh, oh, I didn't hear you mention the Trashers. No, I'm thinking they're trash. Oh, Dodgers. Okay, you're a Dodger fan. All right. I was at, I was up uh, on the fifth level <laughs> looking down when Hideo Nomo got his first hit. That was pretty cool. Um, I told you, you know my uh, Oral Hershiser story. Alex threw up on Oral Hershiser. <laughs> his, his, it was like, man, that, that his his study was amazing. Okay, so I got one more diagram, and I, uh, it, so it's this, it's pretty darn syncopated. Uh, make this a little bit bigger, and it's the ah, did the wrong thing. No, that's too big. Ah, so hard not to grab the 
wrong thing in this software. So we're back to this chord progression, okay? These chords. It's just e, A, then E over A, D, and you can see the fingerings there. If you, you have probably a better shot of seeing the fingerings if you download the, you know, what I should do is maybe reverse these. What do you think? Okay, so let me just play this for you. And this is how it fades out. And that, that last E over A there might be an upstroke. It probably would be an upstroke. Okay. And it would make sense if I were playing this, you know, on electric, I might play it there. If I was playing on acoustic. So if you want to, you can go to the tab and learn it that way too on the internet. But to me, that sounds right. I, don't, I probably taught it in the back in the day like that though. Okay, so we have that big A and then the E over A, which is open, second fret, first fret, open, open, and then back to A, and then A again, and E, the E over A, back and forth, and then we just hit that big D and get that syncopated single note D, which again to me is the hook of the song. Um, it starts out with that. People like hear that. They go, wait, what was that? That's cool. Just he did played one note on a guitar. You know, it's amazing how you can say so much with one note. But one, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Funky almost. Da -da. One. So, so the rhythm of that first bar is one, two, three, four. One, one, one. Looping it. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Okay, that's the first bar. The next bar is much more syncopated. That's the syncopation, uh, but it doesn't feel too much like a syncopation because it's it's eighth note syncopation. But when you throw that 16th note in there, it, all bets are off. So here's the rhythm of the um, second bar only. I'm going to loop that second bar. If you start to feel it, or you can try to clap with me, okay? One, two, three, four. Ba, 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 ba. That's a crazy rhythm. Okay, so that's the rhythm there, and then of course the bump, bump, one, two, bump. You can practice that this way. And again, if you have to, you can practice and a three, one, two, and a three, and then get rid of that three. One, two, and a two, uh, and a. okay? What song are we talking about? Oh, free ride? Yeah, yeah, totally, Jeff. It's a very free ridey type type thing. Again, very common for that era. And it, it, this song was after Free Ride. Free Ride predates it by quite a while, I think. It's not an 80s song. This is an 80s song. This is 80, 82, I believe. So, got a lot of mess here. <laughs> a lot of stuff. A lot of, whoops, dang it, I keep grabbing it. It's so hard not to grab this. There we go. Uh, these 
grooves and rhythms and st such. So let me uh, let me see if I, I have to mute my sp oh they're muted. Okay, let me see. Uh, let me pull up YouTube and see if I can find a um, live version of it. I'll probably be like, dang it, I taught you the wrong way to play it. I'm an idiot. Uh, Yeah, it looks like he's using. Okay, so what's he doing there? Farm Aid 2017. Um, so, um, uh, skip Now again, if I were playing solo guitar like by myself, I might do it differently than Oh, he's actually playing in a key of G. Or he's always oh, playing an open tune. No, he's playing a different key. I can't I don't want to pull it up though, I don't want to get in trouble. So he's in a different key, so that doesn't help me. ROC came to USA. Um, is that the one you saw? It was him doing it ROC came to USA. Oh, there's uh, what's her name on violin. So oh, there's Toby on bass, my friend Toby. The funny thing is that the band, his band was pretty tall, but Johnny John's short. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard to see how they play Jack. This they're not gonna be doing a normal version of Jack Diane. Dang it! Oh, Fourth of July, wow. Yeah, like I said, oh, Keith Urban did it too. It's actually a really good song. I mean, it's a you know a fun song, and you know it's hard it's hard for me to be like objective on it because it's for me it was so much iconic for my youth, being from Indiana. It was like one of the first songs uh, by an Indiana artist that made it big. Oh, Sam, are you talking about uh, second run of the hook? It could be, yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> ah, dang it. It's so hard not to grab that. There we go. That's what everybody prefers. Right there. That's that's the that makes everybody happy there. Watch watch my view count go way up, right? Speaking of, where am I? Oh, 28. Oh, yeah, 26. Swing. Well, we got up to 38 for some reason, just like crazy. I can move this back. Yeah, so anyway, so what's going on? I'm trying to hide the background. Yeah. Uh, Got rhythm is amazing to me. Uh, I believe Johnny Cass created the strumming pattern uh, of Got, Got Rhythm. What song Got Rhythm? I'm off. I'm off of the, uh, I've not been paying attention to the live chat. Johnny Cash will be good. Yeah, yeah. Show Crow. Uh, 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 sure, yeah, Show Crow's got some great, yes, yeah, she might be a good one to do too. Um, I'm trying to think of, I always think of Lap Steel when I think of Show Crow. Um, got rhythm. Oh, got rhythm. Yes, yes. Uh, is that what the song's called? Got rhythm. Johnny Cash. Got rhythm. Yeah, got the rhythm. Is it got the rhythm? Oh no, get rhythm. Get rhythm. That's the song. Isn't that the song? I think. Yeah, I was. Remember, I, I, I started a series, I think I've done three videos on so-and-so's so favorite, you know, John Lennon's favorite strumming groove, uh, Jack Johnson's favorite strumming groove, uh, who else, who was the other one? Uh, oh, Neil Young's favorite strumming groove. And I tried to find, Johnny Cash was one of the ones, Johnny Cash and Bob Dylan were both ones I was trying to pin down to 
like one iconic strumming groove that they do. Because I felt like that was a really good way to add to your repertoire of right-handed grooves. Because that's really, if I always say, one of the most important things you can do as an acoustic guitar player is just to learn a lot of grooves. Otherwise, you're just going to play everything like, you know. You'll have the same groove on every song. And, and it just will make songs be you know, run in together, it all sound the same, and no, you know, it's not going to be as entertaining. Uh, part of what you, when you're entertaining, you want to hold their attention, and if you're, if you're kind of doing the same thing over, it's like singing a one-note song. It's, it's not going to, it's not going to engage the listener, so, um, yeah, I, I just saw John Mellencamp do it, but it looks like he played a different key, because it's too high for him. He played it in G instead of, instead of A, so, uh, Get rhythm when you get the blues. Yeah, Johnny Cash. Yeah, I'll have to I'll, I'll have to check that one out. I opened it up so I have it ready to go when we're done here. And then maybe I'll listen. To, that is a great rhythm. Uh, and that's a great groove to learn. It might be a good song to learn. Uh, technically, is it a, yeah, I guess it's an acoustic song. I knew what you meant, Brian. No, your Johnny. No, your Johnny Cash card is safe. I knew what you meant. I was just thinking, I got rhythm. I don't think he ever did that. I got rhythm, and that's the origin of the rhythm changes. Remember, that's like, that's jazz lingo that I never understood for a hundred years. I was like, play rhythm changes. I'm like, to me that was like that's what I would call changes. Like to any song, I'm like play the rhythm changes. You know, you can play the bass, you can play the drums, you play the rhythm changes, play the, you know the changes to the rhythm part. And I thought, what, to what? He said, play rhythm changes. And I'm like, to what? He goes, rhythm changes. I'm like, well, which ones? Like, what song? And he goes, I got rhythm. And I went, that's what they mean by rhythm changes? I got rhythm. And I'm not even sure. Is it B flat? And then it goes to the circle of fist progression. I'm actually going to do, um, you know how I have the bluegrass thing. I think a really fun progression to solo over is a circle of fifths starting on an E chord. Like... So I'm probably going to do one of those and then maybe do multiples of those. But yeah, it's fun to try to come up with the same way to go through um, those four chords and then come and so do the same thing. So it could be as simple, not as simple. You're going to go, well, that's not simple. But it could be something like. Uh, that could be a solo. Course. Right? But then there's things like, like Carl Verheyen showed me this trick. It was like, uh, you know, I'm kind of doing this like uh, country chicken picking kind of thing. And I'm playing an E7 chord, then a D7 or A7 chord, and then a D7 chord, and then a G7 chord. Those are kind of fun, uh, and you know, it's, uh, what is that? So, uh, with E, uh, 
A7, then D7, there it is, and G7. That kind of stuff. It, you know, and just try to find different ways of. Uh, then over the A, you'd be like. And over the over the D chord, you might go. Over the G. Something like that. It's just it's just fun to play over a circle of fifths. Um, and then just take that lick and try to reinvent it for the next chord and reinvent the same lick. And it's just a kind of a Chet Atkinsy kind of vibe thing to do. So. Charlie B's in the house. How are you doing, Charlie B? Anybody else here? Um, oh, on Mellencamp TV. Interesting. I hope, <laughs> I hope I taught it right. I mean, that's the risk of it. You know, I taught so many songs wrong for years. You know, it. it's only... I mean, I'm trying to be... Close, and I, I've also given you guys cheaters on stuff before, too. Um, sometimes it's really hard to tell. The guitar, like, you know, a piano, there's only really one way to play something. And and with the guitar, I've always made this point. In fact, I've got to do that video. 50 ways to play the same note. Um, but that E note can be played here, 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 and here. So if I hear an E note on a song that I'm trying to figure out, I have to throw, is he on the open string? Is it, does it sound like an open string? Does it sound like an a unwound string? Does it sound like a second string? Or is it, is it shorter, like a third string E? Or is it really short, like a, a fourth string E? Or it's probably not going to be that one, so I can rule that one out. But, or is he going, or is he going, you know, is he going, <laughs> it's all the, you know, all those licks can be played, you know, that same lick can be played in so many different places on the guitar. Same tr same is true for violin, any stringed instrument. Um, but it, it, it gives you so many great tonal options, but it makes it difficult to figure out exactly where somebody played something. So this is my best guess. And I, I guess I should do a disclaimer and just say, it's always my, however I'm teaching the song is my best guess on how to play this. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's no wrong ways to play this. My arrangement, Tom Straley's arrangement, or harmonic E. Yeah, I've got, I got a list. I think I came up with 54 different ways to play the same note, and I'm, I'm, I got to do that video. It'd be fun. Uh, what's the? Um, hmm. So, I, I'm gonna do a, a shameless plug here. Not a plug, but I'm. I got this thing. It's probably not $99 anymore because of inflation. Yeah. I got a friend coming over. He's going to... Yeah, it's $119. Of course it is. Dang. But you can get cheaper ones. But check this thing out. I've, I've got a friend coming over. Um, I'm going to put the link for it coming over because I have this thing called Blue Driver and you download the software it's like let's see Blue Driver copy all right um, and you download the software it's the thing you plug into your car your car if you have a car that's like more recent than 2000 or something maybe a 98 on or something they have that thing you plug and it'll tell you if you're check engine lights on it'll or even if it's not it'll give you diagnostics on the car which is really handy to have uh, my best car the check engine light will come on and i'll go oh dang what's wrong with it and i'll click on it and it had a misfire so one misfire how many times is <laughs> if you're doing 2000 rpm that means 2000 revolution so that means there uh, on a four cylinder that would be but if it if it's a four cylinder and it's 2,000 RPMs. Does that mean 8,000 firings of the spark plugs on a four-cylinder? I think our Volvos are six cylinders. So six times. So that's 12,000 firings per minute. So, yeah, if it misfires once, you're going to give me a check engine light? 
it seems kind of ridiculous. I don't know if there's some kind of like number it has to hit before it turns on the check engine light, but um, but yeah. So the software is called. So you, you you download the software once you buy the item, and then you just turn on your Bluetooth, plug it into your car, and it sends you all this data. So check that thing out. Yeah, you, if you buy it from there, I get. Um, but then it has this whole thing. You you know you've got read the codes, clear the codes, save reports, smog check, freeze frame. Mileage status, vehicle info, that all that kind of stuff. It's it's uh, it's pretty pretty handy. So my friend's coming over because I have one of these. He's got an old Volvo and he's trying to figure out if he needs to get this major repair done. The other thing is, it, it, it I think it creates links, and you can actually look it up and see what the price for the part is and all that stuff too. I mean, they're all you know. Obviously, the added value on that app is going to be them sending you somewhere to get a commission off of some purchase. Yes, it's an OBD2 checker, exactly. Um, and they make cheaper ones. This one's 120 I paid 99 for it or $100 for it. Actually, Alex bought it for me, so I didn't pay anything for it. It's a great deal. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it, oh man, when I, it's called Blues Driver, right? Yeah, Blue Driver, yeah, Blue Driver. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> I hate owning cars. I really do. But this thing's come in handy to kind of like me go, What's it called again? Scope. Yeah. And you plug it in, um, John. You, so, uh, you know, your steering wheel's here to your left. Under there should be this, like, uh, it's it's um, kind of a, a trapezoid shaped thing about this big. And, you know, it's just, it's a thing that your, your tech, your guy, every time you take your car in, they plug their machine into it and they get all the readings from it. Right. So the car talks to you, to you through that. And uh, it's kind of a, a thing that for years and years and years only auto mechanics had these things and now you can buy them i don't know they uh, thank god the government didn't pass a law saying you couldn't own one of these to protect you know i guess auto mechanics don't contribute enough money to the to politicians had they done so they we probably wouldn't be able to own one of these things but yeah it's uh so it it just kind of plugs in and then the light comes on you know you turn i think you have to turn on your engine and then all the information gets sent to your phone and you can go through all those. It's like, it's a, it's a bloody lifesaver. You know, it's like, oh man, do I need to take my car in right now? It's like, no, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's just that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's the automotive diagnostic port. All cars, I think newer than 98. Is that when they started, started doing it? What year? Does anybody say? New cars. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, there's several different models. So that one is, I saw others on Amazon that were cheaper. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I've used that one, so I know it. Um, and if you want to buy it, then I make a little percentage of it, of the sale. Like, I don't know, maybe get five bucks or something. That's pretty cool. Oh, Charlie B, you guys getting together? Gristle time. Or are you watching uh, another live stream later? So next week's live stream, just to reiterate and re restate, is going to be on Tuesday. Okay, I'll tell you about what what I what I'm doing, but I I just can't. I'll be, I'm busy working that day, so um, I won't be able to do the live stream. I've been booked, so I'll I'll be. Uh, we'll talk about it next week. Um, what else is going on? Everybody else okay? Healthy? Everybody doing okay? Oh, gosh, I keep grabbing the wrong window. There we go. All right. Everybody doing well? 96. Okay. Yeah. So I, that's what I, I couldn't remember. I knew it was like 90s, but I didn't know when. So if your car is newer than 96, it probably has that port. In fact, it may have been mandated. See you next Tuesday. See you, Pepper. God bless you. Oh, you're not going to get to Toledo. That's pretty far drive, Sam. Yeah, yeah. It's artists. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bruce said artists, or John said artists play it different every time. Yeah, I, I've always, you know, I remember I. I I had a friend that was a huge Gen uh, Genesis fan. And he went to the show. He was so excited to go see him, I think, at the Forum or something. 
back in the 80s, you know, or mid early 80s. And he got back and he was so mad. He said, they didn't play the songs at all like the record. And we had this huge argument. <laughs> he, he, he's a musician. In fact, the funny thing is, he's in, now he's a keyboard player in a, a Genesis cover band. And they play the records down exactly. I mean, it sounds great. If you want to hear the records exactly done, you go to see his band. Um, so he, he, I wouldn't say he made a career out of it. He play, they play like two gigs a year or something. They practice like 900 times a year. You would have to practice that much. And it's, it's early Genesis stuff. Um, and uh, so they are really into it. In fact, I think the guitar player took some lessons from me because he, he wanted to learn some stuff. And I had to learn some kind of odd Genesis songs and teach them to him. But the... Um, we argued about this. It was like, he was like, what? I paid all that money for those tickets and they didn't play it like the record. I'm like, why would they play it like the record? That's what the record, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to play it exactly like the record. I'm like, no, they, the, they would kill themselves. They would commit suicide. They would be so bored. They're not, they created that thing, right? The last thing they want to do is be a, 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 a karaoke machine for themselves. They, that's the opposite of who they are. They are creative. So they created this thing that you think is amazing and so creative. Why wouldn't they keep creating when they play it live and do take liberties with it? And that just drove him insane. <laughs> he just he got so mad at me. He was like, you don't understand. You didn't, you know, I'm like, I totally understand. I, I just, I understand what you're saying, but I'm, I'm talking about from their perspective, why would they do that? Well, but they're the band. They're supposed to play like no, they're not. <laughs> they can do it any way they want. They can change the keys, the tempos, and everything. Oh, the live stream. Oh, yeah, that's right. Greg Koch's live stream. I should check that out. Is it on YouTube? Is it going already? So it, the um, I watched. I think I watched one of his live streams. I don't think he's as entertaining as me. <laughs> but I'm biased. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's his stream two days ago. Uh, see, he's verified. He's verified with a me official artist channel. Okay, that's different. He's only got 27,000 subscribers. So, eh, eh. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm losing I'm losing viewers because I'm just bragging about myself. I get it 100%. Okay, what else is somebody saying here? We got, oh, be well, my friend. Uh, there's, uh, there's different interfaces. Use some apps, the phone. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the, the thing for the... Yes, John, I will be praying for your thumb surgery. Oh, that's right. You can't do your job. Oh, no, you're doing your job now, but you can't after the surgery. Yeah, do the, make sure you do the rehab. It may be real painful, and um, you, you may want to go faster than you should. So be careful there. You don't want to re-injure anything. or You want you want to recuperate as quickly as possible. Yes, it's, I now the thing is, I have a mechanic that I trust 100%. So... I've had mechanics that rip me off and I know what that feels like. And I hate that. And they have you over the barrel because you don't really know car. I don't know cars. Um, and they can totally take advantage of us. Same thing with a plumber or an electrician or whatever. It's real easy to take advantage of someone's lack of knowledge um, in this world. And so um, I only, you know, I learned to find people that generally, and maybe it's just a ploy by people ripping you off, but they'll, if they say, yeah, you don't need to fix that. You're not, I had, I had a, an, Honda. So when we had our Honda, we, we would take it to the dealership and those guys at the front that you drive and talk to, uh, the service reps, they would say, Oh yeah, I can hear that. You need this. You need, you're you going to need new axle, uh, bearings. And I went, really? Oh, that sounds expensive. Yeah. It's, it's not cheap, but you know, we'll, we'll have, uh, we'll have your, you know, technician take a look at it. I said, well, I'm, I'm coming here to see Marty. Oh, okay. You're here to see Marty. Okay. Well, the, You'll have to wait, but Marty's, you know, he'll be able to get to your car later. I'm like, great. I take it to Marty. Marty was my guy there. And he was, we're Facebook friends, you know, he's a musician too. And he was like, 
you don't need to replace the bearings on it. I go, really? It's not going to strain me? He said, it would be squealing so loud you couldn't stand to drive the car long before it would ever strand you anywhere. And I could, you know, I could only hear it when you turn the steering wheel all the way to the left or all the way to the right. You hear the squeak. And that's sort of thing, you know, they're just, those service reps are on commission. And so are the mechanics. And so it was like, just, so it, Marty would always say, just ignore what they tell you. I'll tell you what your car needs. You don't need to worry about it. And it doesn't need that. And those people are worth their weight in gold, literally. So. Oh, I don't think you will, John. But we did talk about last week uh, things that you could do. You could work on your ear. Tr you know, your ear. There, you know, John, I'll tell you one thing. I've come up with some of my best ideas on the guitar without the guitar in my hand. Um, some of my coolest songs that I've written, I thought about before I had the guitar in my hand and kind of created it in my head, which is completely unlimited as opposed to my hands, which are very limited. Um, so think about playing guitar and um, what's the, what are they saying that your uh, um, recovery, is it six weeks they told you? Six weeks isn't, isn't long enough for you to learn, forget what you know. Heck, I haven't played tennis in a, a year and I'll go out there and I'll still beat Alex's butt. Although he beat me that day, but that's because I hurt my tennis elbow. Oh, that, okay. So make sure, John, that if you're watching us and you're all doped up, that you have access to your keyboard so you can, you can, <laughs> and then Dennis and Holly and then Bruce approve everything he texts. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just for Bruce, we, we, we want to see everything he texts. <laughs> Six to eight weeks. Okay, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You won't forget anything. And that's with physical therapy. You'll be fine. You, you may be back sooner than that, you know. And like I said, you could probably do some things without using your thumb. But you're going to want – you don't want to take too many risks. You want to recover as fast. You do something stupid, and you might end up being 10 to 12 weeks. You want to be – you want to stick it to the 6 to 8 weeks. And you know what? Doctors are always conservative. They're always like, oh, it's going to take you 6 weeks to recover, and it's really like 4 weeks or 3 weeks or something. They, they, want, to get, they want to give you the worst-case scenario. Yes. Thumbs are overrated. Exactly. <laughs> I've I've got I got across the country four times with my thumb. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Never hitchhiked. <laughs> my sister hitchhiked all the time, my older sister. She kind of, she hitchhiked to work almost every day. <laughs> I'm like, how did she not get killed? I don't I don't know. She's just like funny. Yeah, well, but also you can you can t you know you probably wouldn't be able to do it with this thing, but you can keep digging your nails, you know, right hand nails into your calluses if you want to keep them tough. You can just you know sit there while you're recuperating or whatever and and toughen up those calluses. That you're right, the calluses might go away. Uh, one thing you want to do is make sure that if you are doing dishes or wash your hands or take a shower. Don't play guitar right after that. Like, give your give your hand. Make sure you dry your hands really well, and then uh, just give it another 10, 15 minutes before you pick up the guitar. So, yeah, keep work on learning syncopated rhythms. Uh, there actually some of these. Um, there may be some. Uh, let's see. What is here's what's that? What's this? Amazing slower downer. Oh yeah. I've never used this. Uh, let's see. I guess I deleted it. But I had an app for ear training. It was also rhythmic. You could you could teach learn how to read rhythms and things like that. Yeah, you could totally do that. Well, and that's also true, AJ. If, if your thumb is bothering you, it's going to hinder your playing. And if the thumb doesn't bother you anymore, that's going to help your playing. So you may actually be better off after the after the rehab than before, before the surgery. So there's that. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I hate to take up your whole day. I could literally just sit here and talk to you all day, but I'm not going to do that. Um, and we're going to... Uh, 
uh, like I said, I'll see you next Tuesday and I'll tell you all about um, why I couldn't, you'll, you'll like it. It's going to be hopefully a good story. Um, but we will, I will see you um, next Tuesday. So thank you for joining. So here, let me make this really big. Boop. There it is. Next lesson, Tuesday. Is that right? The 14th? Today's the 6th. So tomorrow's the 17th. Yeah, yeah, 14th. Oh. All right. So have fun with Jack and Diane. I think I did. I think it's right, but I, I'm having a hard time finding someone to play it live. The video doesn't have anybody. It's just a bunch of photos and stuff. So the original video. Or triangle. Just take up triangle. Yeah. Oh, Bob, you're very welcome. I appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, Lena, I appreciate the tip. And also, same with you. Where, where did... Where did Joseph go? Joseph is usually very chatty. Hopefully he's okay. Joseph, you okay? <laughs> You're not laying on the ground next to your keyboard anywhere, are you? We need to call 911? I don't know where you live. All right. Joseph Joseph made an early appearance. But, okay. So, um, yeah, fun song next week. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll look into it. So next week, we're, I'm trying to alternate acoustic and electric. So next week should be electric. Um, so this week, so I'm not telling you what it is. Last week, I told you what we were going to do. So there was no mystery. So, oh, in fact, I need to change the name of the video, right? Yeah, edit. Jack and Diane. All right. Done. Save. So I'm going to I'm going to end now. I'll talk to you later. See you Tuesday. Bye-bye. God bless.